Welcome back to a new episode of Yuya, the podcast for you, members of the Itchy Soul Playground. And this one really is a conversation starter. So if you're following along and you want to join this conversation and you're not already a member of the playground, I'd encourage you to think about joining us, itchysoul.co, where you can find out more about that. However, most people watching this, almost every single person watching or listening is already a member of the playground. And I feel an in- quite a sense of trepidation around the conversation I'm starting today. And at the same time, it feels important. Now, I kind of, if you already read today's Holy Spirit love note, you'll know that something I've been working through with God and it's all about love God's love so rewind slightly it's bothered me for quite a long time that we like historically growing up in the church we we're told that you know you need to pray the prayer otherwise if you die and you don't pray the prayer then you'll be you know you'll forever be going into condemnation and hell and judgment and torment and all this kind of stuff. I've shared with you before that I was really scared out of hell when I was 12 or 13 and loved into heaven in my early 20s. And so this, where we're at, where I'm at today is very much a part of the journey. But I feel like it's, I feel like my picture of God's love has just been dialed up a notch it reminds me that the, the, the only the closest illustration i have is when about oh i don't know maybe 10 years ago i had my eyes lasered and the the day after i had my eyes lasered they were my eyes were really sensitive and anytime i looked at light it was like there was a hue around it and for for a number of days afterwards colors seemed brighter and quite candidly that extra brightness of colors it like it'd been dialed up a notch that faded or it probably didn't fade I got used to it I suppose and colours still look like colours I love colour you know that but it's like I feel like I have this awareness of God's love and then he's just dialed it up a notch and the more that he turns up the dial on his love the more that I really cannot accept the the traditional church theology around hell in the way that I was taught it in the church when I when I when I was a youngster and a teenager I think it's wrong and yet if you were if you google um some of this stuff there's a good chance that by saying that out loud you get called a heretic so Rob Bell for example he wrote this book called Love Wins back in I think it was 2011 and around that exact same time I remember thinking oh I, I really want to dig into the actual root of those those times where with the bible translates that word as hell and what does that actually mean and then around that sort of time love wins came out uh, and my dad introduced m- me and others to that book and rob bell did that work and so every now and again i re reread love wins because it's that reminder however one of my one of my bugbears with rob rob bell is that yes he'd sort of quote bits of the bible and stuff and that's great but it wasn't, there's not a lot, like it's not specific. Uh, and that's fine. It's it's meant to be a conversation starter. But then just this week, I've been reading another book um, and I've forgotten the name of it, but it's got hell in the title. And this book is incredibly detailed. I mean, I, I've ordered a paperback copy. I've got it on my Kindle, but I've ordered a paperback copy so I can go back through and, and really look at those references again. And it was pulling out the Hebrew and the and the Greek. And for example, the word Sheol in, in the Hebrew um, is translated as hell in some instances in some versions of the Bible and translated as grave in other instances. Of, 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 and depending upon whether that word Sheol is used to describe believers or unbelievers, the translators chose to use the word hell or grave, when in reality, it's the same word and the Hebrews kind of used it as a way to describe over thereness, like after you've after you've departed this life. They didn't really know what comes next. We don't really know exactly what comes next. And so Sheol was this word they used to describe that. And when I read that, I was like, oh, I, it was quite fascinating to me that as somebody who's reading the Bible in English, I'm having to rely upon the decisions that are made by translators, which is why it's really good to read different translations. Now, funnily enough, on Sunday, I started reading this book. Um, I think it's called Hell, Hell, Raising Hell. Yeah, that's what it's called, Raising Hell. I remember now. Um, 
So I'd started reading this book and then on ch- in church on Sunday, I started having a bit of a conversation about this with my mum. And then would you believe it then? The gentleman who was sharing with us then was going into it. I can't remember. I've got it in front of me, actually. He gave me his notes. There's a word he introduced us to, um, era, which can mean fear or worship, depending on the context. And he gave us actual concrete examples of how different translators had had chosen to use the word fear or worship or awe or wonder, all from one Hebrew word, because there are 8,000 words, he told us, in in, uh, biblical Hebrew, compared to our 100,000 words in English. And so there's, you read around the context. And so the encouragement was you need to read around and look at the different translations, because different translators will choose different words. I was like, oh my gosh, that's really interesting. And it tied in so much with what I'd been reading in this book. And uh, so much to say that I've started online learning a little bit of Hebrew because I really it, it feels really important. I I'm, I imagine I'm never going to be able to read the whole of the of the, of the Old Testament, for example, in um, in actual Hebrew, but to actually get a better sense of the context in which the words that we're reading and the words that Jesus read and grew up with get as close to that context and that reality as possible. Now, quite candidly, I'm only halfway through reading this book and already I'm like going, whoa, God, you're amazing. One of the criticisms I read, because the internet's amazing, you can like find loads of stuff. And so then I was I Googled because the, the word that they use for it, universalism, and it's this word I remember growing up as, in, as a kid going, oh no, you don't want to be that, that's heretic, that, you know, you'd be a heretic. And so I googled that this morning and actually that word you actually need to go and say to somebody well okay what do you actually mean by that because there are apparently different flavors of 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 that of universalism there's different flavors of all these different theologies and but what it's left me with is this sense of wow god you're amazing but one of the criticisms sorry brain catching up one of the criticisms that somebody said well if you believe in universalism there's no point to evangelism there's no point telling anybody about jesus etc etc and i'm like no i don't agree at all because actually it was what i comes back to what i've been saying continuously a lot we don't need to be scaring people out of this idea of hell if people actually knew just how loved by god they are they'd come running to him with open arms so yes i do believe that as i've said previously if, it, if I was God and it was up to me to sort of like figure out how to tell all the humans about God such that they'd all go and make make a commitment before they died, I know that they get it wrong and I love everybody and so therefore I'm going to find out a way to make this work because we're told in the Bible God doesn't want to lose anybody. John 3.16 when, when John writes about God loving the world, that's a world that didn't love God yet. And so this, this idea I've, I've maintained or I've not actually said publicly in any sort of podcast episode that I feel like God would have this other stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't really see yet and no if if we ultimately believe that God will reconcile everybody to him and he gets what he wants and there's so many verses in the Bible that talks about Jesus says I will draw all people to me at the name of Jesus every knee will bow just to name two off the top of my head But actually, that doesn't make me stop wanting to tell people about how amazing and loving God is because we're told the kingdom is here right now. And so by by allowing God to love us right now, we can step into that reality right now. We don't have to wait until after we're dead. It's not a get out of jail free card. And so it doesn't make me feel less like wanting to tell people about how amazing God's love is. It makes me want to go, wow, his love is amazing and it's even more amazing than I actually realised. And... At the same time, I'm very aware and I'm feeling this kind of knot in, in, inside a little bit. Well, I did until I sat with God this morning and today's Holy Spirit love note is the result. Humanly speaking, logically speaking, I feel quite nervous about even saying this out loud, even within the safety of the playground, because there's this fear that you're going to go, oh, well, you've completely lost the plot. No, that's not biblical. But da 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 da, you know, because the the theology of hell is so ingrained in our bible to in, in our church tradition but actually if you go back to the early church if you go back to paul and you know the first few hundred years they didn't talk about hell that wasn't part of, of what they did there's a guy whose name i've forgotten who who a lot of his theology was condemned but the one piece of his theology that wasn't condemned was this idea that ultimately everybody will, will be back in a loving relationship with god so humanly speaking i feel a bit nervous about putting this out there but i also feel like it's really important because we can only be love allow god to love us as much as our picture of god 
is based on real love. And I cannot believe that I, as a parent, am better at doing love than God. That just doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So I'm offering this to you by way of a, a real definite conversation starter. Much like some of the things I talked about last week, I am really still working through this in my own head with Holy Spirit, but I would love to hear your thoughts on this. It's a debate that's been going around in the church for eons, ages, forever and ever, and I'm not suggesting that I have the answer, but I do feel like this conversation around God's love is important. So I offer this to you by way of a starter, but I'd love to hear like where you're at with this stuff. And if you've never really given it any thought, then sit with Holy Spirit and ask him, you know, and see what, what he brings to mind, what comes up. Because God's love really is key to all of this. The Bible is a love story. And the more I read and the more I learn, the more convinced than ever I am by that. And I, I haven't got the words for it really. It's just, it's important. I'm gonna just leave that there. His love is important and it's big and amazing. And that's exciting.